Good morning, and thank you so much for joining me once again on this Monday morning as we begin a brand new week in the Lord. And uh, we're going to take a moment uh, for a daily word of encouragement as we look at the Bible. And we're going to look at the final verses now of the book of James. And uh, we're going to conclude with the final two verses that we find here, verse number 19 and 20 in James chapter number 5. The Bible reads here, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. As we think about this final subject that James addresses here at the very end, at the closing of his book, we find here that he speaks about the subject of conversion. We find that word twice here, convert in verse number 19, and then converteth in verse number 20. Now that word convert there means to turn back again. And the subject, the context here that James is speaking about is not necessarily the conversion of souls that are lost, of sinners that need to be regenerated, but he's speaking about converting or turning back again believers, those that are already saved that have strayed away from the truth of the word of God. And so I like the way that Warren Wiersbe put it. He said, uh, it is important for us that we would seek and win the loss, but at the same time, it is important for us that we would seek and win the saved. And that's the subject matter here that we find in these concluding verses, that we as believers, we as members of the church of God, must faithfully seek after those that have drifted away, those that have uh, backslidden, those who have fallen into sin, those who have uh, gone, gone out there and uh, living in a lifestyle that is far away from the things of the Lord, the Bible says that we as believers, as the church of God, ought to seek after them, and our spirit ought to be to restore them back to a proper fellowship with their Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the attitude and the spirit ought never to be one of haughtiness, uh, we ought to never approach uh, an erring brother with a spirit of pride, looking down upon them, judging them from a spirit of pious self-righteousness, but rather we ought to always approach them with grace and with meekness and with love and patience and the ultimate end goal to restore them back again in a proper fellowship, not only with the church, but then of course in their walk with their Savior the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, the perfect example for restoration and grace is none other than our God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think about in the Old Testament, we read about the character of Jonah. And uh, Jonah was a prophet of God. And, and uh, I think most of us know the story that he was called by God, that he would go to the city of Nineveh and he would preach against their wickedness. But he was so fearful, and at the same time, he had some uh, prejudice towards the Ninevites that he ran away from that call, and he got into a boat, and he was sailing all the way to the city of Tarshish. And the Bible says there that God did not simply leave him innocent. Uh, he didn't leave him as he was rebelling and running away from the Lord, but the Bible says that God sought after him, and God even provided a whale for him that would swallow him up and eventually bring him back to repentance and restore him in that work that God had called him to do, and he became a wonderful preacher there, and he sparked revival in the city of Nineveh. And then, of course, in the New Testament, I think about the character of Peter. And uh, Peter, at the moment that Jesus needed him the most, Peter was fearful, and he ended up denying the Lord three times uh, during his final hours before his crucifixion. And uh, we read about that story in John chapter number 21, after the Lord had been crucified, uh, Peter gathered some of the disciples together. He said, I go a fishing. And uh, he went off to the Sea of Galilee, back to his old career. And the Bible says that Jesus didn't simply leave him alone as he was drifting away uh, from his faith, but rather Jesus went to the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus sought after Peter, and Jesus restored Peter back into a proper fellowship. And we know the rest of the story. Peter was used as a mighty man of God, and he was used as, as one of the foundational pillars for the New Testament church and one of the greatest leaders that we find throughout the New Testament. And God wonderfully restored him back to that position and that proper fellowship with the Lord. And that's always the heart of God. It's always restoration. 
And that ought to be our heart as well. As we think about brothers and sisters and, and maybe even folks within our family that are, that are erring away from the truth, meaning that they're drifting away. They're, they're backsliding from a life of faith. They're drifting away from their relationship with the Lord. They're straying into a life of sin instead of living a life of righteousness and holiness before the Lord. The Bible says once again, we ought not to look down upon them from a spirit of pride, but rather we ought to go after them with the spirit of meekness and grace and love. And we ought to do everything that we can to encourage them and to restore them back unto the Lord that they would repent of their ways and they would restore their fellowship with their Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as, as, as I mentioned earlier, the quote from Warren Wiersbe, we ought to be diligent, yes, in seeking to win the loss, but then at the same time, we must be diligent to seek and win those that are saved, uh, those that have strayed, those that have drifted. We must go after them and bring them back and restore their fellowship and their faith with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I pray here this morning uh, that we would be those types of Christians, that we wouldn't be the ones that are self-righteous and prideful, and, and that we wouldn't shun the erring brother and ostracize the erring sister, but rather we would go after them with grace and love and restore them once again unto the Lord. And so I pray that could be an encouragement and a challenge to us as we begin this Monday, as we begin a brand new week. I pray that could be a blessing to each and every one of us. God bless you. Have a great day.